guitarist sit in the amplifier in a car. I'm really excited about this new game. Because it means that I can be loud and you can be loud. So I stand! Now, like I said, I came out of Spring Boot Camp, and now I haven't used the tank yet. I haven't seen the tank, but I really like it. So if I say dragon, all you're going to yell out, like a tank! Like a tank! I didn't say it. Grant's my little boy. I'm calling John or Master Sergeant Hudgens if you want to refer to him as Master Sergeant Hudgens. Um, so I'm excited. Um, I graduated from Mexico High School. There's nobody from Mexico here, is there? Okay, what about the Sweet Hill School District? Phoenix. Awesome, yeah, we represent. If you're just too embarrassed and don't want to say anything, I understand. I was right there with you. Uh, but I, I graduated from Mexico High School in 2008. <coughs> Um, then I did a few semesters at, at Arnold Dodge Community College and, and tried to get by. I was working full time between seven different jobs and, and I, I did five semesters at OCC. And yes, OCC is a four semester college. You can do the math if you want to. <laughs> um, about, a year to about a year ago, um, this month, I moved into an apartment and, and had my own place. And if any of you know about my family, there's, there's 12 kids in my family right now, including both my parents. And it's, uh, three or four, four bedroom house now. Um, so we're really tight and we're really cramped. And I love my family to death, but I wouldn't want it any other way. Um, but I just got cramped, you know? I, I, I'm pushing 20 years old and, and I wanted my own place to live and to breathe. And so I found, a, I found an apartment in Radisson that I was able to afford. And so I started living in Radisson. And, and when I first moved in there, I was so motivated to be on my own, to do things right, and to you know, pick up my own bags and make my own decisions that uh, me and God means we were just cranking. And then I was just like, well, I kind of want to get a degree from OCC, but I, I, I want to stay debt free, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. But I didn't really have a direction. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I just knew what I wanted my life to look like. So I kept working full time. I was working at Best Buy pretty much uh, during the mornings for a while. Then I was going straight to all of our nights, and most weekends I'd go and do a wedding reception over in Lafayette. And uh, so I was just kind of getting by, and, and I, I realized that as I was loading up with my life, and I didn't have any goals, that I was just that I was just putting around. I, I wasn't really making, I wasn't, I wasn't really making any progress. Tracking? Like a tank. Like, like a tank! tank. Yeah. Right, you all die in boot camp. You have no idea. So we're we tracking? Like, like a tank! tank. Alright, so here I find myself about, uh, probably about five or six months ago, and um, I was going through a real rough time. I had got my pay cut um, pretty significantly at Olive Garden, and um, more or less, I was asked to leave Best Buy because I, I couldn't get my act together and I was passing out my discount to everybody that wanted something. And uh, they, I'm just going to be honest with you, they, they said, hey, we're not going to fire you, but we're going to ask you to leave for a little while. You, you can come back, but why don't you just take off for a little while? And so then I got my pay cut at all and, and I was struggling. I was, I was running out of money in the bank. And um, one night I went to bed and I mean, it was one of the most depressing nights I had because I knew that I had enough money for about three or four more days. And um, I, I didn't have a plan. I, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I wasn't about to run home and, and, and run back and live with my parents. So I got real scared and I, uh, I woke up one morning and, it, and I know that God must have put it. God, God must have told me because I woke up one morning and I was like, you know what? Dad's always been telling me to go into the Air Force, you know, all, all the benefits of going into the military. And uh, I, I said, you know what, today I'm going I'm to start researching the different branches of the military. I'm going to find some recruiters. I'm going to talk to some recruiters. I'm going I'm to see if, if this military thing really has this ability that, that my parents have always told me it does. 
And so I, uh, I wake up and I eat and I take a shower and I hop on my laptop on my couch. And uh, what's the first thing we go to when we get on our laptop? Facebook. Facebook, yeah. So I open up, I open up my uh, Firefox and the first thing that pops up is Facebook. So I sign in and I post and got a message. And I got really excited because nobody ever sends me messages unless it's Mike, because we know we all get messages from Mike about three times a week. <laughs> and so I check this message and it's from a, it says, Dove Marine, D A Marine. I'm like, who is Dove Marine? Like, I don't want to talk because it's probably some advertisement, something like this. But I open it up and it, it's a recruiter uh, with the Marines from my area. And he said, hey, I don't know if you're, if you're interested, I don't know um, if you really care, but if you ever want any information on the Marines, um, just hit me up here's my phone number. And that's the first time I had ever gotten a message on Facebook from a recruiter, or the first time I had been contacted outside of school by a recruiter. I said, you know what, that's, that's pretty cool, let's talk to him. So I called him up, and, uh, and the next morning he met me at my apartment, and uh, we had breakfast, and, uh, and I decided that I wanted to be a U.S. Marine. I, I thought it was the coolest thing I ever had. My dad was going to kill me. Um, my, dad, my dad did uh, just over 20 years in the, uh, the Air Force, and uh, the Pierces have an Air Force guy going on. And I knew that I, knew that, that I really wanted to do the Air Force, but I said, but I thought, you know what, this is, this is probably what God wants me to do. And at this point in my life, I say this is what God wants me to do, and I still heard from God, but I can tell you it was probably one of the weakest times of my life. I was going out on the weekends, and Dad, Dad and Libby doesn't know this yet, but I was going out on the weekends, and I was drinking with friends and hanging out and just doing whatever. That's probably where I spent most of my money, and, and I, was just, I was just doing whatever. You know, I, I would go out, and I was just doing whatever. And so uh, here's this Marine thing, and... Uh, it comes up, and, and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. So I signed up, and I, and I took the ASVAB, and it went well, and I, and I started looking for a job. And, and they originally told me that I was going to be able to leave in, in June. Or no, they told me I was going to be leave, leaving in July. And, I, and I'm thinking, man, I, I don't have enough money. If I don't have enough money to last me from whatever was made to July, I, I literally didn't. And, uh, and so I go, and I go sign up, and they said, hey, you know that job in July? It's not there. We're gonna have to, you're going to have to wait until November. And I said, well, there's, there's no way I can wait until November. And, and I didn't know what job within the Marines I wanted to do. Um, but they said, I said, there's no way I can wait until November. So I start praying. I said, God, you know, I'm not on the right track right now, but I, I don't know what to do. I don't have money. I can barely afford to put gas in my car. Um, I owe too many people too much money. Um, what am I going to do? So one morning I wake up and my recruiter calls me. The Marines wake up real early. Um, he went, he called me at like 6 o'clock in the morning. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, rolling out of bed. And I'm like, play the kids and breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, because I don't want him to know that he's going to bed at 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, which is very late, by the way. So, uh, he goes, okay, well, well what are you doing? Can I stop by? Can I talk to you real quick? I said, I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. So I sprint out of my bed. I'm throwing on clothes and, you know, throwing my dirty laundry all into my bathroom and stuff like that. And he sits on my couch and he said, Grin, I got an opportunity for you. I'm not going to tell you what the job is first, but I'm going to tell you when you're able to leave. You can leave in two weeks from today. So you can leave, and this is, uh, this is right along the, the end of July, or at the end of May. He says, you can leave in two weeks from today, but you've got to do the job that I tell you to. You can't pick a job, you've got to do this. I'm thinking, all right, whatever, what's the job? He says, you've got to do military police. And as soon as he said, I said, yep, yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do. My brother wants to be a cop, and I know way too many cops. Like Joe, and I knew what they represented, I knew what they did, and I said, you know what, if, if there's going to be cops out there, if, there, if there's cops in the military, that's what I want to do. So I shipped off to boot camp. Um, and I thought, you know, I thought I was a tough kid, and I had two older brothers that, that beat on me, and I said, you know what, this is, you know, I'm going to get through to this. I'm mentally, you know, I've lived on my own. I'm, I'm probably a lot stronger uh, mentally than a lot of these kids are. And, uh, and so I got to boot camp. Boot camp is at Paris Island, South Carolina. And... Um, if any of you do research, there's actually a really good uh, Netflix documentary on, on boot camp in the Marines. But, but you pull in there on a bus at about 10 o'clock at night, and, um, and you're just pulling in, you just got off the plane, everybody's just kind of relaxed, a little bit nervous about what's going to happen. And they pull, up, they pull up to this gate, and there's two guys standing there with M16s, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> and so, so they stop the bus, and they open up the door, and these two guys with M16s start running on the bus, screaming and yelling at us put our hands our heads between our knees, that blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're pointing guns at us. I mean, they're pointing loaded M16s at us. And they're screaming at us. I mean, people are like, okay, yeah, this is going to be a lot. Just like, oh, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> and so, and so, they, so we were all putting our heads between our knees. And we weren't actually on the island yet. We were at a gate outside the 